So the Black Carp 2 has performed pretty well so far and I didn't have a single failure part yet. And with 175mm wheels that I switched out from the original 150mm wheels, I chugged through any kind of terrain with more confidence. However, this means I lose a lot of torque with increased top speed due to the increased wheel diameter. So to eliminate this problem, I've decided to upgrade the ESC to programmable ESC Foxbox Tanka. How does it perform? Is it worth the upgrading? Let's find out. What's in the box? For a starter, I bought Tanka and VX1 remote for this modification. Tanka comes with pre-soldered wire with one anti-spark XT90S connector and two MR60 motor connector. One interesting part is this. The electronic components are potted under the rubbery coating. This will make this ESC more resistant to vibration and moisture or debris that may come into the enclosure. Here I have removed the rubber coating. The PCV itself is glued to the alloy housing which acts as a giant heat sink. Compared to their higher end ESC Foxbox Unity, it's about the same PCV design but is populated only half of the MOSFET which makes sense since Foxbox Tenka is rated up to 150 amp instead of a 300 that of the Unity. Inside the box, we find the male motor connector, power switch, USB-C cable, PPM receiver wire, and some stickers. Here's a VX1 remote from Philips Sky that I'm going to use. Unlike the original Onzro remote, it is missing the display. But Flipsky also sells VX2 remote if you want that display option. Since I only want the battery indicator and the speed change, I've gone with VX1. Modifying. Enclosure of the Black Carb 2 is held by 14 Allen key screws and waterproofing glues. Inside we see 12S 3P battery and high viewing ESC. Here's a comparison with Tenka in terms of size. Tenka by no means is a big ESC, but in comparison to the original hobby wing, it looks much wider and it wouldn't fit where it was supposed to be. Removing the ESC also reveals the thermal paste applied in the factory for better heat dissipation for this ESC. There's a screw that holding the metal plate of the enclosure and I had to remove two of them because Tenka just wouldn't fit. For holding the Tenka in the enclosure, I drilled a hole to fit through a bolt and nut and through a double-sided tape also for the assurance. Now I need to swap out the connectors for battery and motors. I also swap out the motor sensor wire because Tenka or any vest for that matter uses 6-pin JST connectors. You can find this JST connector easily on Amazon and if you have a soldering machine, it is really not that hard to reconnect the wires. Since the Tenka uses 6-pin instead of 5-pin of the Hobbywing ESC, I had to reorient the connection using this schematic. My initial Tenka has fried due to the internal switch failure caused by the original BMS. Which is why I have exposed Tenka I showed you earlier. Thankfully, Massive Stator, the company who makes these, gave me another chance to use the Tenka for free. Massive thanks. Onstra uses BMS for both charging and discharging. In order to not burn my ESC again, I need to bypass this charging monitor of the BMS. It is quite simple. All I have to do is remove the battery negative wire that is soldered to the P- terminal, as you can see right here, and directly soldered to battery negative terminal. This will essentially bypass BMS monitoring for discharging the battery 
Instead, I'm going to program the motor controller to cut off the battery when it's necessary. Programming. Since Tenka doesn't have Bluetooth module and my old HM10 Bluetooth module is no longer supported from new generation of the VASC, I'm using my computer via USB to program it. You can download the VASC tool at vaskproject.com. It's a program that lets you program this VASC based ESC, including Tenka here, which I'm going to link it in the description. Once you connect Tanka, it will first prompt you to update your firmware to 5.2, which is the latest version. And then you can proceed with your setup, which is automatic setup essentially. For detailed setup process, I like to refer to the Mboard's YouTube tutorial, which I also link in the description. Since I'm using the default 30 amp rated battery, it is important to set up the amp value correctly. So here are values that I put. For motor amps, I put 70 amp, which is maximum amp that Tenka works. Braking is at negative 40 amp. For battery, I put 18 amp for discharging and negative 7.5 amp for regen. This is per each side of the motor, which makes a total of 36 amp for discharging and negative 15 amp for regen. This setup will overdrive battery a little bit by 2 amp per cell group. However, I found that 15 amp discharging value or 30 amp in total doesn't give me enough torque. It's almost the same as a original Hobbywing ESC. With a bit of research, I found the Samsung 50E battery cell, which is in here, is rated for 13.7 amperage for maximum discharging. And as I'm only 60 kg and I don't live in a hilly area, this is much of a safety concern. It, although it is likely to shorten the overall battery life, 21700 battery is rated up to 500 or sometimes 800 charging cycle. And if we go with the 500, that is zero to 100 chargings 500 times. And this will last close to two years if I ride every single day until the battery is empty. Obviously, this formula cannot meet every single person because everyone has a different weight and riding style and maybe someone ha lives in San Francisco where a lot of heel is. So use your discretion and think for yourself when you're using the setup. When everything is said and done, I reapply the sealant and screwed everything back on. Performance Since I don't have a Bluetooth module and without any display in remote, I can't show you exact value that this ESC performs. However, by experience, this board is now at least twice faster with increased headroom in electronics. Braking performance is also so good that it basically leaves skid marks. And with 175 mm wheels, now I can go up to 50 km an hour and with more torque than I can handle. In fact, I use it slow and medium mode when board is fully charged because it is kind of scary when you put through the full power. FOC performance on Tenka is noticeably smoother than already smooth Hobbywing ESC despite the higher torque setting now. And with smart reverse function, I can also reverse without clicking any button. Overall, I'm very much satisfied. It's not exactly a plug and play. You have to solder it, you have to drill it. However, when you can physically feel the double the power, I don't think I can go back to the old board. Only caveat would be the remote has such short battery life, but that's going to be another project. So stay tuned for more. Well, that's it for today and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.